Okay, I just pressed go live before I got myself set up. So just hang with me for a minute. If you guys are going to be <clears throat> taking notes, get something juicy to write with. And I've got a lot of really good things to share with you guys today. So hold on, I'm getting there, I promise. Today we are talking about appreciations and consequences, but more than anything, we're talking about protecting your boundaries in practice, and I'm going to talk about why that's important in a minute. Um, I'm just not totally sure that I'm live with you guys where I want to be, so just give me a minute to get set up. <clears throat> there we go. Okay. And if you're joining me from wherever you are, please just say hi in the comments thread. I like to see that I've got company with me. I see that there are a couple of you guys watching. So today we're talking about boundaries, appreciations, and consequences. And I first want to go into the why. Why is this an important thing? So the audience that I'm talking to right now, you guys are wellness practitioners from all over the world who are looking to A, be successful in practice, B, see more people in less time so that you can be as efficient as possible so that you can live a life outside of your practice, and C, really enjoy what you're doing in practice. And there are a few things that go into figuring out that perfect balance, right, of protecting time, energy, and money. We need to protect our time because it is truly time, health, the most precious commodities that we've got, right? We need to protect our energy because there's only so much of us to go around. And we need to protect our money because quite frankly, we're working really hard at earning it. And money is a, it's an, it's a currency, it's an exchange. And if we're out of balance with it, then we're out of balance in what we do in our office, in my opinion. So what I want to do today is I want to go over boundaries. Let's talk boundaries first. And then I want to go over consequences and appreciations. I'm going to talk a lot today about um, the club, which is Joyfield Practice Club, if you use promo code SURF, you're going to get it for free. And what the club does is it gives you the, the written version of all of this. And I also go over step by step how to realize each thing in your practice. So that's the club, and I'll come back to that at the end. So um, let's talk boundaries, because as wellness practitioners, we have a tendency to be in the seat of the giver. We're constantly giving and giving and giving. And what happens is we have a tendency to give to the point where we might feel a bit out of exchange with the people that we're serving. And then, and then all of a sudden what happens is the giving turns into resentment. And there's, there's nothing good about that for anybody involved. So the idea is is that we become familiar with what it feels like, where it feels like, how it feels like to A, recognize our boundaries and B, what it feels like to have our boundaries crossed. Everybody has a different physical experience of this. In my body, it's a feeling of um, recognition. It usually has some heat associated with it. Um, and I'm going to give you a for example. Uh, a couple years back, this is, you never know like what you are going through that's going to stick, right? Like we've got these sticky points in our memory system and um, my husband does a lot of meditating and he says when you go into deep into meditation, you've got all these memories that surface that you just never even thought that you would remember again. It's kind of like if you hear a, a song that you haven't heard in 25 years and you know every word of it, it gives you some kind of a, a glimpse glimpse to how much your memory can store. So this is just one of those moments that I remember really clearly. And I remember thinking that was such a clear boundary cross that I don't think I'll forget it. So it was around the time of Passover and um, we do a Seder in our house 
to like honor that time. And I invited a few people over to experience a Seder because they had never experienced it before. And I did that like a month before the Seder was planned to say, hey, come to our home, you know, come enjoy this holiday and this precious time with my family. We'd love to see you. And I dropped that invitation verbally. And I was super clear, like, let me know how, you know, how, when, why, all of that stuff. Who wants to come with you? And I I saw these people each week for the next three weeks, and there was no um, acknowledgement of the invitation. And I kept like I made it this whole thing in my head. And what I when I look back now, what I realized was a I had an expectation that I was going to have a response to that invitation right? That, that's my, on me 100%. B, every time I saw that person or those people, I thought I was going to see that experience being acknowledged. I have a really good friend who says to me, when people show you who they are, believe them, right? Whether they're showing you the good, the bad, the ugly, the beautiful, believe them. So I didn't want to believe this situation. And but what I was feeling in my heart was a boundary being crossed. And the boundary for me, the recognition of it felt like embarrassment, it felt like sadness, it felt like a pit in my stomach when I saw these people, or this one person. And um, it just felt like a churning that just didn't feel peaceful to me. That was such an aha moment. And it was a simple thing. And I'm sure it was a misunderstanding for sure. But it was still an experience in my world of a boundary being crossed. And the boundary was um, get back to me and respect that I'm inviting you to my home and respect that I'm choosing you of all the people I know to enjoy this special time with me and my family. And the consequence to that boundary being crossed, you guys, again, this is a very simple example. The consequence is there weren't any more invitations after that, hands down. Had a respect of the boundary shown up or been relevant or apparent to me, the appreciation of that boundary would have been, I would have shown them a really beautiful Seder and I would have uh, welcomed them with open arms into my home. So boundary, identifying it, feeling it, knowing what it feels like, knowing the color, the shade, the sound, the vibration of it, whatever it is, boundary being crossed, boundary being honored, how do you celebrate that? How do you appreciate it? Boundary being disrespected, what's the consequence of it? So I was just on a um, call with one of my clients. I do a lot of coaching to doctor with doctors all over the world and doctors of all kinds of trades. And the call, the call that I just got off of <laughs> was it sounded something like this. All of the moms come in and the kids are with them and they leave the toys everywhere. And then I have to sanitize the toys. This is what my client's saying to me. Then I have to sanitize the toys and then there's 10 minutes that's gone by. And I'm thinking I, I definitely need to hire somebody. I need to do all of these things so that um, I don't have to spend my time cleaning up the toys. Okay. So that's, that's the setup for the boundary. The boundary being honored would have been for my client to have some kind of a rule in the practice. And the rule is, moms, if you if your kids mess it up, you clean it up. Dads, if your kids mess it up, you clean it up. That's the rule in my office. That's the constant, that's the policy in my office. The policies are there to protect my boundaries. Okay? All right. There is an appreciation for when the boundary is honored. So the boundary that we're talking about is seeing a mess in my office and feeling like I have to clean all of it up and um, sharing in that responsibility and that dance with my practice members. That's the boundary that we're talking about. The policy in my office to respect that boundary is a note on the door a note on the wall, a video that goes out to new practice members before they even come to my office saying, if your kids mess it up, you clean it up before you leave, okay? 
That's the boundary. That's the policy for the boundary. The appreciation of that boundary being respected is we have a basket of lollipops on the counter. They're organic, like gluten-free, naturally fruit juice sweetened lollipops. They get a lollipop when they clean up their toys. They get a sticker when they clean up their toys. They get a pen when they clean up their toys. The consequence would be, and you guys, again, simple example. The consequence would be, hey, listen, Sally, last time you were here with Johnny and Susie, um, you left toys all over the place, and I just don't have the bandwidth to do all of, all of the toy cleaning up, so it's a conversation. That's the consequence. The next time it happens, Sally, I'm just going to ask that your kids don't play with the toys in the office, or maybe I'll give them one toy. There can be like a policy basket for toys that really don't need a whole lot of attention for cleaning up. So it's the point of it, you guys, is to protect your time, energy, money. If I'm spending five minutes, even three minutes in between practice members, and I've got two hours to be at my office, and I'm going to see 30 people during that two hours, every time I spend three, four, five minutes cleaning up toys, it's another three, four, five minutes that I could have had with a new practice member, that I could have had adjusting a pregnant woman, that I could have had um, calling one of my community partners and sending them um, love or sending them support or um, backing up the referral that they sent me. You get it? So it's time, energy, money, protection. Let me give you another example and then I'm going to show you some fun stuff. I'm also going to say to you, here's my little club commercial. If you are wanting the how-to for all of this, go on in and join the club. Use promo code SERVE for your first month free. After your first month, it's $89 a month. And you guys, we give you so much as a club member that you're going to be like, I don't even know what to do first. Okay. So another example of this. Let's talk about a team member because this is where we kind of, this is our Achilles heel, right? I think what happens for a lot of us is we fall in love with our team members and we get like these rose colored glasses on and then our boundaries go out the windows, um, our policies go out the windows. So the boundary, let's give the boundary for a team member to show up at team meetings on time. Team meetings start at three o'clock. You're late if you get to the team meeting later than 2.55, ready to go with a pen in hand. If you're late to a team meeting, it affects everybody on the team. If you have more than one team player, you guys are super familiar with this. I'm sure that you are. So the boundary is um, we need to be efficient with our time. And it needs to be respected because there are multiple schedules involved with a team meeting. That's the boundary that needs to be honored. The appreciation when that is honored is um, it can be an, a point in a bonus pool. It can be um, it can be acknowledgement to the rest of the team. It can be however that team member likes to be appreciated, and everybody likes to be appreciated differently. Some people think that all team members like to be appreciated with money, and that's not necessarily true. So it's really important that if you do have a team you're asking them how they like to be appreciated and celebrated. And then the policy around it is, listen, Susie, our team members, our team meetings start at three o'clock. If you're here at 302, you're late. And if you're late once, like I can kind of brush it off. If you're late twice, I'm going to say that I'm going to give you a fair warning. And if you're, if you're late more than three times, I'm going to just we're just going to call a spade a spade and say that we're not respecting each other's time, energy, money, and this probably isn't a fit anymore. And have an agreement with Susie that that's the policy around the team meeting. So it's boundary, policy, appreciation. Okay, so I want to go into sharing with you what I use. I'm a big pen to paper person, and this is one of the, you know, Everything we teach inside of Staffless Practice Academy has a guide that goes along with it. The guides that we use are what are what make up the books that I have out there. So we've got four books and this is from one of the books. So I'm going to go ahead and share with you here. So the appreciations and consequences, one of the most important things that we can do for our team members whether or not you think it's important, I'm telling you right now it is, is coming up with a daily to-do list. Some people might want to see a weekly to-do list, and some people might even want to see a monthly to-do list. 
I've shown you over and over what my weekly to-do list looks like. I actually haven't even printed it yet because I've been coaching all morning, but as soon as I get off of this call, I'm going to print it up and do my Monday list. So again, if you're a club member, this is inside of the guide section in the club. I just posted it so that I could say that and be true about it. Okay, and then finally what I want to show you is, let me just get to the top of this page. Um, I gave you a glossary. Here, let me shrink this down. I gave you a glossary for how to use this document. So obviously a check mark is when we know something is complete. And APP is how you appreciate your team member for completing the task. CON is the consequence if the task is not complete. And the KPI, I don't know if you guys are familiar with the term KPI, it's key performance indicator. It's a measurable, um, it's a measurable quantity or quant it's a way to quantify whether or not a team member, including yourself, is doing their job as efficiently and effectively as possible. It's something that you can simply measure, quite simply measure. So an example of how to use this is, let's say the item is, um, the training that I did inside of the Joyfield Practice Club is the item is taking out the garbage. Again, really simple task, but it's a task where if it's not done, it creates a real problem in the practice. So the item is taking out the garbage. The team member simply checks off the sheet when they've taken out the garbage, okay? The way that we appreciate them is maybe they get a bonus point and you know each team member, depending on how many tasks they have for the week, they get one point for each item on their task list and each point is the equivalent of $2 or $5 or whatever your agreement or your way of appreciating your team member is. The consequence to whether if the garbage is not taken out can, again, this is agreed on with a team member, it can be a deduction of points. It can be that you give that item to another person on the team who can handle it because when people show you who they are, believe them. If they miss taking out the garbage three days in a row, they're showing you that taking out the garbage is not the best use of their time or it's not within their wheelhouse or their bandwidth. This really would be relevant to like, say you have recalls in your practice and um, your a specific team member is in charge of calling practice members or texting practice members who have not been to your office in six weeks or more or who are not on the schedule. The item would be uh, completing the recalls for the month. The check mark would be when they believe or their all systems go when the item is complete. The appreciation is they get a bonus based on a certain number of appointments that were rescheduled. The if that's legal in your area, in some areas that's not legal, the consequence to not doing that is you might even give the recall program to somebody else on your team. And that's one less way that this team member can bonus. And then the KPI, the key performance indicator, would be the actual measurable outcome to that activity. Does that make sense to you guys? So the way that you use this chart is there's a daily for all of the things on the daily to-do list, which is going to look like this. There is a weekly and there is a monthly. And I think that the hardest part of being really good with this stuff is remembering to look at it. <laughs> because a system is only as solid as how you implement it and how you use it. So I just want to recap. Let me first say that if you're not a club member, go on over to the club and grab a seat. Here's the link and use the promo code serve and you'll get your first month for free. And then go over to the guide section and you'll see this handout. Okay. Handout. I'm showing my age. I'm going to be 50 on Friday, you guys. Okay, let me just see if there are comments that looks like there are a lot of them. Hi, Leah. Okay, let me just Debbie's here. Jordan's here. Hi, Jordan. Okay. Um, just to, by the way, you guys, if you've got problems with Zingle, if we've done a texting program for you, um, hit me. Don't go to the Facebook group. Hit me because I'm kind of, I got my, I've got the keys to the queendom over at Zingle. If you guys need help with a texting program, Zingle is a texting program that we use in our practice, in all of the practices that uh, that we we set up for you guys. Okay, so to recap, identify what boundaries being crossed feels like. It's different for everybody, okay? How does it make you feel? What does it make you think? 
How does it make you, um, w what kind of experience do you go through when a boundary is being crossed? What are the consequences? Uh, what are the policies around protecting your boundaries? That's important. What are the consequences when those policies aren't respected? And what are the appreciations when they are? As long as you can nail down those pieces, and you guys, if you're in the club, we're going to do this together on Thursday in Masterclass, um, you're good. And your team can grow as much as you need to. You just have to remember to look at it because the system is only as good as how often you look at it and how much you let it run the show for you. Okay. I hope that was helpful for you guys. I will be back on next Monday. Um, same time, same place. And let me know if you have any questions. I'm right here.